Hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're doing fantastic. Today we're going to cover week number seven of the stained glass flower puzzle mystery quilt. We have this week and next week and then we will be finishing up our quilt. I am so excited. I can't wait to see how everything comes together and to see the progress on your quilts. I love seeing your pictures. Today we're going to go over the puzzle pieces for week number seven. Week number seven, we are down in this row. And so you can see again this week, the piece number A7 is a solid square of fabric. And then we're doing applique and the remaining five blocks. I'll show you my color palette for my blocks this week. And this is my six blocks. So we have this pretty fabric, which was the back of a quilt that I just finished up. And I had a little bit left over, so I said, yes, I'm going to include that in my quilt. <laughs> and then we're just repeating some of these other fabrics that I've already used in the previous rows. And this brown one and the striped one, except this time I'm going to do my stripes horizontal instead of vertical. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and I just starched my fabric so you can see they're still a little bit wet. So there are my fabrics for this week. And I thought, because I've had lots of people ask me if you can use the heat and bond light to do the applique portion uh, of our flower. And uh, the answer is absolutely yes. And I have not covered that in this series. So I thought today I would pull out uh, some heat and bond light and show you how I do that. And quite simply, it's exactly the same as raw edge applique, except you will need to mirror image your pieces uh, as you're tracing them. So these are the puzzle pieces for week number seven. We're starting with B7. Again, we're all uh, green now, so all of our applique fabric is green. We have parts of a leaf and a stem. C7 is stem and leaf. D7 is two pieces of a leaf. And then uh, these last two pieces are leaf pieces. So a uh, pretty bigger size applique. There should be nothing too terribly small except for this one piece here in the C7. There's a small little piece of stem right up on the top edge. So I'm thinking this should be a relatively easy week. And by week seven, I think you all have it down packed as far as uh, doing the applique. And I've seen lots of pictures and I am just so thrilled. So to mirror image your design, if your printer has the option to mirror image, uh, that would probably be the easiest way. I looked this morning and mine does not have that option. But a lot of software and a lot of printers do have the option where you can go into advanced settings and click a little setting that flips your image uh, and reverses it or mirror images your, your image. And so if your printer or your software that you're using has that, then to do the raw edge applique with uh, the heat and bond, all you'd have to do is click that little setting. Mine does not, and so another way to mirror image your PDF is to hold it up to a window, just like this, up to the window, and trace what you see through. And today I'm going to be using my light pad, and it will act as my light source, and so I'm going to show you how this works. We're going to go ahead and trace our pieces and mirror image them together onto our heat and bond light. So this should be a lot of fun. And then the rest of it is really just the same thing we've been doing all along the satin stitch and adhering the fabric squares to our fabric base. For that portion, I will be using the wet glue because I think it would be very costly to cut uh, a whole bunch of five inch squares out of heat and bond. But if that's your preferred method, uh, I say go ahead and do that. I will be using the wet glue to put our five inch squares on the fabric base at the end. But for the applique, I'm definitely going to do this week with the heat and bond light. 
So let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we are. We're ready to do some tracing and I have my light pad plugged in. It's just a little tiny USB is plugged in. When I turn this on, it is going to make the camera go funny for a little bit. And, uh, but it all should straighten out. So the reason why we uh, want to mirror image our puzzle pieces, the applique for our puzzle pieces, when using heat and bond is because the heat and bond has a adhesive side and a paper side. The paper side is what we actually trace on. But the adhesive side gets fused to the wrong side of our fabric. Uh, the exact opposite of doing freezer paper applique where we are um, fusing the freezer paper to the right side of the fabric. This is completely opposite. So in order to fuse onto the back side of our fabric, we have to mirror image our applique pieces. Again, you could hold them up to uh, a window source or some kind of light source. I'm just going to use my little LED light pad. And this is the right side. Now we're going to be tracing from the back side of the paper. So when we trace these pieces, they will all be mirror imaged. You can see how easily you can still see through that. So I'm going to go ahead and just trace my little pieces. I will say that since I've started using these micron pins to trace out my pieces, uh, I have been a lot more accurate in my tracing and my cutting and having my pieces line up with one another. Uh, in the very beginning I was using a thicker marker and it was hard for me to tell exactly <laughs> which side of the marker line to cut on because the line was really thick. And so some of my applique pieces uh, were not lining up in the very beginning. But I switched over to this marker and my lines are much thinner. And uh, I've been much more accurate this way. So you can see the tr tracing of your pieces is exactly the same. We'll trace out all of the pieces for B7 together, just like this. And then we have two leaf bits right over here. So who is ready for spring? I think today is the first day of spring, or maybe it's tomorrow. I have to look at the calendar, but I am totally ready for some warmer weather. So just like that, let me turn this off so you can see. I'm going to go ahead and label these. B with an arrow, B with an arrow, because I'm going to trace all my pieces at the same time and I don't want to get anything confused. All right, so mirror image. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Here is the pieces right side up and you can see these leaves come in and swoop down to the left a little bit. So the mirror image, they come down and swoop to the right. So everything is exactly opposite, just like that. So if you're using the heat and bond light, that's all you really have to do. And of course, this applies to all of your projects. If you want to use the heat and bond light for any of your uh, applique patterns that you have. Oops, I almost traced that the wrong way. <laughs> there you go. I love this little light pad. See how well it lights everything up and you can see even from the opposite side of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and trace all of my pieces 
and um, I'll come back when they're all traced and um, let's see I'll cut them out as well and then we'll fuse them onto our blocks together. I went ahead and traced all of my pieces and just separated them by cutting them apart and with the heat and bond light product you want to make sure that you don't cut your pieces apart directly on the pattern line you're going to give yourself some space around each one of your pieces and I thought since this is the first time we're doing this using the heat and bond light in this particular project I would go ahead and fuse my pieces onto my fabric I think that would be uh, something good to show in case you've never used heat and bond light and this is the first time that you've seen it so I have all of my green fabrics that I'm going to use for my applique and remember we're fusing our pieces to the wrong side of the fabric instead of the right side like we do with the freezer paper and I'm going to go ahead and start fusing my pieces and of course you'll want to read the directions for uh, the heat and bond on how long to fuse it but I have my iron set to a medium heat and the steam is off and I'm going to go ahead and get my B pieces right here and C is over here D E C C <laughs> I should have sorted all these out before there we go I just like to make sure that I don't do two of the same fabrics for each puzzle piece so I'm going to go ahead and We'll fuse this on. Again, no steam on my iron. And really, it is just as simple as this. You're going really quick. You don't want to overheat that adhesive. Let's go ahead and pull my D fabric over and we'll fuse that on. really quick just like that and uh, let's bring in an F piece just like that so I'm mixing up all of my pieces so that none of this same green fabric is next to each other hopefully if I'm thinking right Now we can just set these aside and move on to the next green fabric. We'll pull in, whoa, I lost some of my adhesive. Let's move those out of the way. We'll pull in that piece. We'll pull in this piece. Just like that. And let's pull this other F piece. Let's fit him in right there. What I really love about doing applique is that you're able to save all of your little scraps <laughs> and uh, still be able to use all those fantastic fabrics. go so just like this we're going to cut all that extra off and save it for next week and we'll cut those out in just a minute let's bring in this green fabric I have my pieces too close to the iron <laughs> so we'll put that there We'll bring in this B piece and we'll do E right there too. Just like that. So I think next week we'll go really quick through the applique portion and we'll really focus on doing some sort of sashing and I think I've decided I'm going to use the yarn for my 
little um, black pieces that separate all of my blocks. I think I've decided on the yarn. So we'll end up uh, doing that part together and then we'll add the border together and then we'll layer our quilt and let's see what else will we do. We can quilt our quilt and then <laughs> that's going to be the last week for this project. I can't believe we're already approaching the eighth week. I really feel like this project has flown by. Just like that. Those pieces are down. Just like that. And our last piece has all of these little bits. Just like that. Now that little piece is not sticking because it's stuck to my ironing board. <laughs> not paying very close attention. Alright, now all of my pieces are fused onto the fabrics and just like the freezer paper applique, we're just cutting directly on the line at this point. Just like that. Okay, so there's one of our pieces. You can see that's the pretty side. We'll be removing this paper in just a minute and adhering this right into place. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these pieces out and we'll come back when we are at this stage. Now I have all of my pieces cut out directly on the line. So I'm ready to go ahead and start fusing these down into place. So we'll do this first block together. We're working on B7. So we have this longer piece. Mirror image with the pretty side facing up. It should fit just like that. Let's see, I need a little pin. Because I like to go ahead and score my paper. Just like that. And that reveals the adhesive that's stuck on the back side of the fabric. Let's see, to line this piece up, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a couple of reference marks. Because it doesn't quite come down to the bottom there and I want to make sure it's lined up right. So just like that. And this lines up right in between those marks, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and bring my iron in and fuse that into place. Just like that. So this method is definitely a lot less messy. There's no glue that gets on your fingers. Let's see, this piece does not need a reference mark, so we can go ahead and put that right down in the right hand corner. Remove the paper back. Just like that. And we're putting this piece right in this corner like that. So there's that little piece. Let's see, this one is that piece there. So let's go ahead and make those marks.
and we'll need a set of marks down here so let's go ahead and do that now all right Just like that, we're lined up. Let's take the paper off the back. Just like that. Without shifting our block, I'm gonna bring that right into the edge and line it up just like that. And then we'll fuse that into place. Let's see this little tiny piece goes there. Now this is the piece that I accidentally fused <laughs> to my ironing board. So I'm going to have to come in with some glue along the tip of this little leaf and glue that down here in just a minute. But that's okay. Just like that. Fuse it down. And then we have one more piece at the very bottom. Let's remove the paper back. The shiny stuff is there fusible. And this piece we are lining up right on this bottom edge, just like that. And there we go, there's all of our pieces. Ooh, we're going to be doing a lot of satin stitches on this piece. <laughs> And there we go. All of our pieces are fused down into place. I'll have to come in with a little bit of glue stick and fix that little tip right there, but that's okay. There is our position B7. And uh, I'll go ahead and fuse down all the other pieces and do the satin stitch. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put these pieces onto our fabric base. And we'll meet up when my pieces are all glued down. And here we are. We're all finished up for week number seven. I have all of my pieces glued down into place. You can see I have a small little gap right here where I cut my applique piece too small. That's okay. We're going to cover those seams and all the way to the left side of the quilt. So, yep, we have one more week to fill in this bottom space. I'm going to show you a picture here of my weeks one through seven and how everything is looking on my quilt. And I love the colors. Uh, I think it's turning out fantastic. I hope you prepare yourself for next week as we wrap up this quilt series. We're going to have a lot to cover in next week's video. So go ahead and make those final decisions on how you want to finish off your open seams on all of your 5 inch blocks and gather your 6 blocks for next week. And I hope you enjoy stitching out these pieces. It is a lot of stitching, the satin stitching on these pieces this week. But it will give you some good quality time with your machine. So turn on some music and grab some coffee or tea and just enjoy uh, some one-on-one -on -one time with your sewing machine this week. If you'd like to share your pictures, uh, the links will be in the description box below for my Facebook page, uh, Lisa Cape and Quilts, and uh, the Creative Crew group will be in the description box as well. I'm also going to link uh, a, a link to Amazon where I purchased the light pad if you're interested in that. Uh, it is very, very handy. I've used it in lots of different projects, and I look forward to doing some more projects with that in the future. So if you've never seen that before and it's something you might be interested in, the link for that will be also in the description box, along with these puzzle pieces. 
So I hope uh, I showed you uh, clear enough how to use the heat and bond light. Again, you're just mirror imaging those pieces and then the rest is all exactly the same. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week. I am, I am really like on pins and needles waiting for next week so we can wrap this up and have a finished final quilt to hang on our walls. Until next Wednesday, we'll, we will see you really soon. Bye.